When we were first talking about doing this, uh, I was joking that since I work in IT, my job is basically just Googling stuff. Um, so I'm going to do a talk about Googling stuff. Um, so I am. But uh, let me see if I can actually share my screen. Okay. Able to see my screen? Good to go. All right. So I'm going to talk about uh, reverse image searches, which um, I'm sure a lot of you know how to do, but a lot of people also don't know how to do it. So if you don't, this is for you. Um, this is my, my fancy artwork here. It's the, the only artwork I did for this. <laughs> um, so yeah, reverse image searches. What's a reverse image search? It is, um, well, you know how to do a search in a search engine like Google. Usually you type in a word and then you find websites and then there's a little tab where you can look at all the different images that, that search brings up. Um, so a reverse image search is kind of like that, except you're using the image instead of text to do the search. So um, why would you want to do this? You can use it to um, find out what the origin of an image, where like, what's the source, what website it originally came from, um, if it's available in any other sizes or resolutions or a transparent background or something like that. Um, if you want to see where else on the web it appears, like if you're trying to find out like someone stole your artwork or something, or what websites are featuring your game or something like that. Um, or if you just want to look for something else that looks similar to that piece of art. Um, personally, I tend to use it when I am researching stuff such as um, most frequently I use it when somebody posts um, like a artwork to Twitter or something, but they don't credit the artist and I really want to know who the artist is. So I will go on a, a reverse image search um, adventure <laughs> to try to find that. So how do you actually do it? Um, if you're on a desktop, it's pretty easy. There's multiple um, search engines that allow you to do this. I'm just going to go with Google because that's one that everybody knows. Um, but uh, so if you just go to google.com, you just click on the little images uh, text in the upper right corner, or you can just go directly to images.google.com to go directly there. And then once you're there, there's this little camera icon. Um, and you click on that, and then it will give you the option to um, either paste an image URL or upload an image. So generally, I'll have an image um, saved to my computer or my phone and uh, choose the file from there and upload it. And then it uploads it, and then it brings up your search results. Uh, now, uh, one thing is that it, this works on a desktop site. It does not work as easily on a phone. When you go to the mobile view for Google, um, you don't get that little camera icon. You have to actually switch your phone into uh, the desktop site to be able to click on that little icon and upload. But it does work on a phone, but just not the mobile site for some reason. OK, so then um, you do that, then you get the results. And they are pretty hit or miss. So here's an example of uh, the cover art for one of uh, my games, the one that Adrian showed earlier, Ryan's Odyssey. Um, so the Google's AI has some interesting interpretations of what artwork is. So apparently my game is a uh, box art featuring fake legendary Pokemon. But um, if you use a slightly different image, you can get completely different results. So here's just the artwork about the DS box. And it just comes up as a fictional character. And then you get. Um, some links related to what Google decides that the image is of. Then you get some visually similar images and then some links where that actual image appears. And you also get an option to look for the image in different sizes if available. So that's the basics of uh, how a reverse image search works. Um, now I have a story about one way that I used this yesterday, um, using that example of trying to find the artist who did a certain piece that um, I saw on Twitter yesterday. 
Um, so somebody posted this uh, piece of fan art on Twitter, but they didn't know who the artist was. Um, they had found it on a website where it was uncredited. So I try doing a reverse image search and I'm just finding that same website. You'll find this a lot with Pinterest. You only find Pinterest pages and you won't find the original source anywhere. Um, so I do the reverse image search and just get that same site. That could be a dead end or it could just be one step in the process. So I went to that website and I looked through the artwork and it was just a bunch of, it was like somebody had uploaded a bunch of fan art from all different artists. Um, and I'm looking to see, are there any uh, signatures, URLs, watermarks, anything on the images, but there wasn't for this one. But I did find one that was in a similar art style. So I was like, maybe it's the same artist. So I saved that one and I did a reverse image search on that one. And that brought up that same website, but also one other site. So, um, actually I have, I have my process here. <laughs> um, so I find that website and um, it is just like a landing page. It's not like the website was there, but it's gone now. So I go to archive.org to try to find an earlier version of that website to see if it has the image. And I do that, I find the site, but all the image links are broken. So I can't actually find that particular image, but I find some text that might be referring to that image. So I take that as a good sign that that's maybe the artist's website. So I look for any other links that might give me any other direction. And I find a uh, link to a Facebook page. I go to the Facebook page and it's still active. Uh, so I go to the photo gallery on the Facebook page and scroll through six years worth of Facebook photos. And there I find the artwork. And now that I can confirm that the artwork belongs to this person who owns this Facebook page, I can use that information to find their Twitter handle, go back to the image uh, and credit the uh, artist on Twitter. And that is an example of how you can use uh, a reverse image search in um, your internet detective work. And I think I've gone on long enough. So that's that. That was some, I agree with Floyd. That is some hard course to think. <laughs> no, very cool. Very I love, cool. I love that. I love that. I've, I, I've used uh, image reverse image search. Um, it used to be something that you could almost, you could right click and do. Um, I think that went away for a while. I don't know if it's still there, but um, I too have run up against that frustration of the mobile thing. So to the desktop, that's a nice little trick to, to get around that. Very awesome and the impressive detective work. And I also want to concur with what AJ said in the chat, which is that um, you should always cite your sources. And you would yes, think, you should. You would think you should that never internet, have to go through that. <laughs> yeah, you would think that the internet would make this like an easier process or that like this wouldn't be as much of an issue, but we've been dealing with it on the internet for many, many, many years. I've definitely used the process back, back in the day when I was trying to do print material. Um, I'd somebody would say, use this image. And it was crappy low res version of it. And it's like, well, let me see if this reverse image search and it was much cruder and less useful than, and there were fewer sources, but still i got so excited it's like oh there's a larger resolution version of it available but that was the only way you could find it because you know uh, we're very you know google has been pretty good with search for a while on text-based stuff but there are certain words and phrases that you can get yourself into real big trouble with uh when surfing especially at work uh and so the image search is way more direct so that's very awesome spread the gospel that's a good one <laughs>